didn't come on Kaiser's orders. I love Joshua, <laughs> and even though he rejected me once, he has simply not been given the right opportunity. Well, I fucking hate here. this. <laughs> What is your real There's relationship with nowhere. Joshua? This is this is the rewrite of, of all his hearts. This makes Joshua gay. With with gay characters, you have to write them better than this. Well. You don't draw, write them I like this. I will make him too. gay. Uh, boy next door. The Fallout community has always been a rather opinionated one, like many fandoms that exist. The more you delve into this fandom you'll realize that the strongest of ideologues tend to gravitate towards the community's favorite game of the series, Fallout New Vegas. A game that's so perfect that any change made to it in the form of mods, fanfiction, or even a player's personal choice in their own personal game has the chance to be seen as blasphemy by one or many members of the community. If you talk to most people in the fandom, they'll tell you that one of the worst products or mods made for Fallout New Vegas in the recent time has been Fallout the Frontier. A mod that led with huge promises, but released with horrible writing and terrible bugs. But what if I told you that there was another mod out there? A mod that was so hated, so despised, that for a while, this was considered the worst mod ever made for Fallout New Vegas. A mod so hated, it spawned its own memes and tropes. A mod so phenomenally buggy, that many mod guide websites will list this mod under its do not play section. A mod that made so many interesting changes to the main game that many find it appalling. That mod was Honest Hearts Reborn. Released in September of 2015, Honest Hearts Reborn is an attempt to completely rewrite the entirety of the Fallout New Vegas DLC, Honest Hearts. To quote the mod page directly, the mod is advertised as a story overhaul mod for Honest Hearts DLC, with a whole new story for Joshua Graham, the Tribes, the Legion, and the New Canaanites. Fully voiced with almost 30 completely new NPCs, deep moral choices, and a fresh take on the story of the Burned Man, literary, intelligent, with plenty of explosions and gunslinging. Already, this is a slippery slope. For those of you that don't know much about Honest Hearts, and for some reason are watching this video, the mod revolves around Joshua Graham, a man who is constantly referred to as the Burned Man in the main game. He serves as a sort of legend among the entire world space of the Mojave Wasteland. Once a proud general in the faction of Caesar's Legion, he found himself disavowed once he failed to take over the Hoover Dam from the New California Republic. As punishment for his failure, and to show off what the Legion does to people who fail, he was covered in pitch, set on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. From then, Joshua Graham was suspected to be dead. But no. He survived. And legends lived on of the Burned Man. And what Honest Hearts goes on to serve as is as a redemption story for this character, as he moves on from the Legion and tries to reunite with his previous faction, the New Canaanites, which unfortunately were uh, taken out, killed, murked, by the evil tribals known as the White Legs, which are the prominent figures of Honest Hearts. This mod is about Joshua. It's his redemption. It's his story. And in my personal opinion, I think the story and characters are the best part about Honest Hearts. They're very well written, very eloquently spoken, and, most importantly, very memorable. Where Honest Hearts typically fails for me is the world space in general, as I never really found it that interesting to explore, and a lot of the quests you'll be sent on are rather boring. Like collecting walkie-talkies. Collecting lunchboxes, for some reason. Medical supplies. Exploring small little caves. And, of course, the final quest, which is the best part of this mod, which involves either escaping Zion, or taking the fight to the White Legs themselves, and taking out the Chieftain, Salt Upon Wounds. Most of the people I've spoken with tend to agree with me on that sentiment, that a lot of the gameplay and a lot of the quests can be a bit boring, but what really saves this whole DLC is Joshua himself, and a lot of the other characters you'll come across, like Follows Chalk, a companion you get in the Dead Horses tribe, all Clouds, a companion you get for the Saros tribe, and last but not least, Daniel, a fellow New Canaanite that's forgiven Joshua, 
but has different ideas about how the tribals of Zion should react towards the White Legs. On, of course, I have to at least mention Randall Dean Clark, who has one of the most interesting backstories and interesting guns that you can get in this mod. While you never meet him in person, his story is endearing and really sells the lore for the Sorrows tribe that you'll be meeting. So when I read the description of Honest Hearts Reborn, I'm worried. But at the same time, I am a little intrigued. It's the same world space. There are more characters. The Legion and the New Canaanites are more involved. However, the description seems to imply that they are taking Joshua Graham into a new direction. And for a character so beloved as Joshua Graham, in a community that is Fallout New Vegas, that can be an issue. Looking at the mod author for this project, James Afloat, also known as Ted Bushman, this is his very first mod. As a mod author myself, I have to say that this is a very ambitious project for a first mod ever. Rarely do projects like this ever really work out, and I usually try to convince beginning modders not to do things like this. Regardless of that fact, I do have to commend the mod author here for actually seeing a large project like this through. Especially considering it seems like he did most of this work, if not all of this work, by himself. Really, that does deserve a commendation. And personally, I think we all need to take a moment to appreciate that level of rare dedication. I've been working on modding New Vegas as a hobby for the past 10 years. I've seen firsthand how a lot of these projects just fall apart, especially when it's your first mod ever. Considering that fact, I found it rather curious that this mod had such a bad reputation. So before I got into the mod, I did a little research into why exactly people didn't care for it. One of the main reasons for the hate came from the technical standpoint of things. It's important to note while that this mod is buggy, as it says so right in the description, unfortunately buggy is synonymous with quest mods for Fallout New Vegas, so that can generally be expected, even if a lot of scripts in the mod are fairly basic. However, the main problem with this mod isn't really the bugs that you might come across, but the fact that the file recompiles every script record in the game, which can cause game-breaking bugs with both vanilla and modded content. This reason alone is why websites like Viva New Vegas will have this mod near the top of their mods to avoid list for that recompiling error. However, despite that major issue, it really wasn't the most common reason I got for hate of this mod. Most people were upset about the story, or rather, what it changed. And boy, were there some interesting comments about the many, many changes of this mod. Many, many comments about how characters re were revoiced, changed, removed, and much, much more. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the story of Honest Hearts Reborn, written by award-winning playwright Ted Bushman. And I know I put it into a disclaimer, but I will need to mention this again. Please do not harass any of the voice actors or the mod author in question because of this video. Even if you abhorrently hate everything I'm about to talk about, it's not worth sending your hate towards them. Just let it be. Starting the mod, we'll head over to the Northern Passage, just like the vanilla game, and talk with Chet Masterson. Um, excuse me, I mean Chen Masterson, and his wife, Lucy. No huge caravan with interesting characters this time around, but we do have a nice truck that we're going to be using to get to Zion. Not sure how exactly they parked up here, or why they're parked up here, but here we are. So talking with Chen and hearing his backstory, we learn that he wants to do some trading with New Canaan, and how Joshua Graham might be alive, despite the legends, and we're immediately teleported into Zion where we set up camp for the night. While I find it confusing as to how we got this truck into this location, this is a nice change that I like so far. In the main version of Honest Hearts, we don't really get to talk to many of the people in the caravan we're traveling with, so when they die later on, we don't really... I feel like much is lost, and I feel like that was really missing from the base Honest Hearts. In this mod, we get a brief, quiet moment to get to know Chen and Lucy, and I appreciate that. If it wasn't immediately taken away when they die the next day in an ambush. Immediately. I guess in that sense, it does hit a little bit harder than it would in the main game. My only dissatisfaction is that I don't really find Chen and Lucy that interesting, Whereas the characters in the original Caravan, Jed Masterson, Ricky, and Stella, were a lot more interesting to me, and they had a much more interesting backstory overall. Anyway, as I previously spoiled, 
The next day comes and the truck is horribly damaged, so we're walking along and that's when Shan and Lucy are horribly murked, just like the caravan is in the vanilla game. Oh god! Oh god, how did they die? Did they just have a heart attack? But this time, not by white legs, but by Legion. And just as you're about to escape, you find yourself captured and thrown in the company of the great legate Livius. He goes to explain that the Legion have a presence in Zion and they're here looking for Joshua Graham. Livius knows who you are, even if you haven't done anything in the game by this point, and tasks you with finding Joshua Graham by talking to many of the tribes in Zion. You'll find that the Legion camp has replaced the White Leg HQ from the vanilla game with several tents dotting the canyon. While I appreciate this concept, I feel like it wasn't really pulled off very well as there are a few nonsensical items that are still here and various floating items that just cause issues. There are a few people to interact with while you're here at the camp for the very least. You'll get a new companion named Brutus that has a very interesting style of facial hair and a very abrasive attitude. There's also crazy old Casca who wants you to find his compass. And also I can't tell if this man is just really old or really drunk. You lost your compass, old man? You wouldn't know a compass from a corkscrew. Oh, would you? Oh, you wouldn't know a compass for a corkscrew! If you find it, will you bring it are back? Are you old or drunk? Your eyes are collapsing in on themselves. I'm very I frightened. I was gonna say that. He's got the eyes of an old schnauzer. <laughs> You'll have two paths you can take to leave the camp. Either of which will take you through territory of a new faction introduced in this mod, the Burned Ones. Now, the Burned Ones are literally just Joshua Graham cosplayers. They, they think he's cool, so they wear bandages on their head and they shoot at people. Yes, they are as goofy as they sound. More on that later. Once you get out of the Three Marys, you'll be in the main Zion world space where you can start to interact with the various tribes of the valley and start questioning them about the whereabouts of Joshua Graham. Unfortunately, None of them speak English, so we'll need the help of a translator to communicate with them. Thankfully, with Brutus and our team, we'll be able to speak to some of the tribals in the area, such as the Bloodstone tribe, who are this mod's version of the White Legs. At the Bloodstone camp, we'll meet with their leader, Salt Upon Wounds, who's undergone the full rewrite treatment, now being a young woman with a voice that sounds vaguely like Mila Kunis. What can you tell me about the Burned Man? Ah, uh, this is he the was great burned. secret Caesar wants to know. In a know. man. <laughs> and he sends a cub to ask it. I will not give it freely. Shut up, Meg. She'll direct us to a shaman named One Tenth who lives in the airplane on the hill. Arriving at the airplane, we'll meet with the said doctor inside her totally not a vault airplane. She reveals herself to be an ex-New Canaanite under the name Amy Wilkes. From here, she'll give us details about how to find Joshua Graham once we convince her the Legion has good intentions in finding it. Or just by lying to her. Seriously, this whole dialogue situation was a bit odd, to say the least, but I think I know where the author was going with this. Along the way, we'll also meet with a mysterious man disguised as a legionary who will offer us a reward for betraying the legion. Good thing my legion allied companion didn't hear that. Speaking of Brutus, he also has a bit to reveal for us, as it turns out, he's a legion turncoat who wants to put Joshua Graham in charge of the legion instead of Caesar. He even killed another legionary and took his name and identity. Really nice of you to confide in me, Brutus, even though we only known each other for a few hours. With our lead on Graham from Amy, we head over to Dead Horse Point, the new headquarters for the Joshua Graham LARPers led by Brother Achaeus. He'll give us a quiz to see if we're enlightened enough, but we'll fail no matter what. After which, we'll fight him and his LARPer friends in an admittedly interesting combat sequence that eventually descends into nonsensical banality. He's like, I can't quit you, and then gets shot 8,000 times. What? Did you? The ghost of Louis Armstrong is here. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I see trees, trees, trees. Near the end of the fight, we'll face off with a mutant named Adam who will kill Brutus in a single punch. Nice job, Brutus. After dealing with a super mutant, we'll finally meet with Joshua Graham and. You finally made it. Okay. I you did. I hear there's a lot of competition for that these days. You see, I would lay out the red Why carpet. Why does he sound like moist it's... critical? <laughs> oh so my gosh, deal. he does. You absolute buffoon. What you have there is not clips. These are mags. They're mags, not clips. You absolute fucking dummy. 
the same way that this is also a mag. They're all mags. Stop saying clips, you look fucking stupid here. This time around, Joshua Graham is a lot more sad and feeble, not really wanting a part of all the chaos that's happening around him. And as a part of the main quest, we have to decide what is best for him, because he's a child and he can't make any choices himself. But before we personally decide Joshua's grand fate, we have to talk to everyone. What do you mean everyone? EVERYONE! That's right, kids. We're only just getting started with the new factions in this mod because there are a ton more we need to talk to, and each and every one of them is gonna positively change Joshua Graham's outlook on life. So I hope you like walking, because we're gonna get started. We've already talked with the Bloodstones as part of an earlier part of the quest, so the next people we'll have to talk to are the Highlanders, a tribe of large super mutants hiding out in a general store. We'll scout lunch boxes. So, who are you guys? We are the Highlanders! Moving on. Next, we'll move on to the new Canaanite refugees, where we'll meet some of the relatives of Daniel, who I guess is, um... Sir, not appearing in this film. It's here we'll be able to recruit a new companion, Zoe Young, who will be able to translate for all the tribals in the region, since Brutus is no longer functional. There are two other tribes we can meet, and we'll need her for, specifically. These tribals are the Sun and Moon tribe, a tribe allied with the new Canaanites that worship a mysterious god in a vault and also pretty much the reworked versions of the Sorrows. And there are the Locked Horns tribe, a bunch of surfer dude bros that like Nuka-Cola, and they're pretty much the rework of the Dead Horses. Unless they were something back then. But that's before I was born. Why does he sound like... He sounds like a skater dude. So... He sounds like, bro, like, I'm totally from this tribe called the Surfing Boards, and like, brother... After meeting and allying with the various tribes, we'll meet up with Joshua again, who needs medical attention. Speaking with Amy Wilkes, we're able to recruit her and healing him, but we'll need something extra from a vault the Sun and Moon tribe worships. So finally, we're going to be exploring a brand new interior native to this mod, and it's not as exciting as you might think. Entering through this door jutting out of a small rock, we'll go down deep into an amalgamation of clone cells from Vault 21, and a very strange backstory about the people who lived here. I'm not even going to get into that, just take my word for it, it's a bit strange. But what's even stranger is what we find in the basement. A little girl. Are you going to hurt me? You feel like what Chen. the f- what? <laughs> Why are you an adult? What is this? Why are you like speaking a, in- Are you going to hurt me? Okay, this is just too weird for me, man. Just, just give me the strange brain medicine I need so I can get out of here, please. Thank you. Now armed with an experimental serum we got from The Memory, we can help Joshua, or or alternatively, we can give it to some random caravaneer who uses it to help her mentally challenged sister. Ultimately, that's just a small side thing, but it's interesting you can do that. Once we help Joshua, we're treated to a dream sequence that we're somehow sharing with Joshua Graham. The dream sequence itself is not really much to write home about, in terms of gameplay at least, as it's just a small shooting sequence, but near the end we find out that Daniel was killed by Kaisar, and Joshua feels really guilty about it. Anyway, after our bonding trip with Joshua, it's now time for the final showdown, as Legate Livius is attacking the new Canaanite refugees. Once we fight through the Legion, we'll face off with Legate Livius in the church, where he reveals his true intentions. I mean what I couldn't tell any of those fools out there in red, what I couldn't tell oh, you. Shoot. I still have my- I didn't come on Kaiser's orders. I love Joshua, <laughs> and even though he rejected me once, he has simply not been given the right opportunity. I fucking hate here. this. <laughs> and yeah, they're, uh... They're creepy. I do not like it. This, this isn't yeah. healthy, you have to let Joshua- Buddy bottom it in the wasteland, no loot. The only thing that matters in the wasteland- I will make him love me! Caps. Oh god. Ah. Uh, so really, I was- Still, I use my speech skill to convince him to stand down, and he runs off. I convinced Joshua to reunite and assist the new Canaanites, and the new Canaanites, in turn, learn to forget their past problems with Graham and accept his return. After meeting with the main crew of our journey, we're given our reward, and we return home. This mod was quite a journey, and after playing through all of it, I have to say I think a lot of the hate that it gets is unwarranted. Now, I would not call this the worst mod for New Vegas, not by a long shot. 
Still, I hesitate to label this as anything above average. Looking at it from a technical standpoint, the mod works. And if you're installing it for a single playthrough and uninstall it right after, you hopefully won't run into any major issues. But I definitely would not recommend it for a massively modded playthrough due to the potential issues it might cause with the recompiled scripts. I also noticed that this mod is not nav meshed in various areas that heavily affected the combat and gameplay. It even at various moments prevented some of the companions from following me and causing certain scripts to not fire properly. Looking at it in the GEC, I noticed that many areas either lack nev mesh entirely, or need to be finalized or recompiled. A lot of the scripts for the mod are fairly basic, but for the most part, seem to be functional. I will have to give the mod author props for actually using the proper prefix and not just 00 or AA like a lot of mod authors do. The quests, NPCs, and scripts are really well organized in the files, so I'll give them props for that as well. For our first mod, these are all pluses for me, and I think the player's choice definitely comes into play for this mod, so I'll have to commend the mod author for that as well, for not having a linear story. There are multiple dialogue choices, skill checks, alternative ways to handle issues. All of this is very good for a first mod. Still, there are instances that are beyond your control. For example, no matter what you do, you cannot save Chen or Lucy Masterson. Just like how you can't save any of the caravaneers that go with you in the base Honest Hearts. And, of course, you will always be caught by the Legion at the beginning. No avoiding that. A lot of people seem to have problems with being force captured, but considering that this is the mod author's first mod, I can give him a pass for that, as he has a very specific story he wants to tell, and personally, I feel like this was the best way to introduce the character of Legged Livius. I think it's very unreasonable to hate the mod just because of that. As for the combat, I don't really have much to say. At a first glance, it seems fairly balanced. There, there isn't really that much combat in this. You'll mostly be fighting the burned ones, and when you aren't, you'll just be talking with people. I will say, though, that the burned ones are way better armed than the white legs are in vanilla, and have many varieties in their ranks, but are fairly weak when compared to the white legs, and plus that whole nav meshing thing I mentioned earlier doesn't really help too much in the combat scenarios. There are, of course, other enemies that you fight, Legion, wild animals, ghouls, and even some Protectrons that are park rangers. I also have to mention that the level design in some areas is not the greatest. We have floating meshes, weird structures, copied cells, and interiors that are advertised as something that they are so very clearly not. The uh, plane was probably the most egregious for me as it was clearly just a Vault 11. Don't tell me it's a plane. I have eyes. The vault was also really bad too. It was clearly just copied cells from Vault 21, but again this is the guy's first mod so it's not a major problem for me. And onto my problems with exterior locations, the city of New New Canaan, or whatever they call it, doesn't really make much sense to me. A lot of the fences are made from boxcars, and where did they get them? Are there trains in Zion? Why are they floating? Where did this church come from? Why in this town with only two buildings is one of them full of geckos, and why has nobody done anything about it until I come along? Again, I have to say to myself, it's a first time modder, so these aren't things I really should get that upset about. Where this mod mostly fails for me, and I imagine many others, is more so in its story and presentation rather than gameplay. I'm not the best person to criticize writing, I mean look at my mods, they're not exactly award winning in the story department by any means, but regardless, I'm going to start criticizing this. The mod is advertised as a rewrite for Honest Hearts, and what, from what I gather from an interview from the mod creator Ted Bushman, and what is written about the mod, it's meant to be taken very seriously. There clearly was some deep passion for what the mod author was writing. He felt like that there was an issue with how Joshua Graham's character was portrayed, and he wanted to fix that. And that's great, that's fine, you can do that, but... This mod suffers from what I would call a fan fiction writing. And I struggle to use that term because technically all mods are fanfiction in the sense that it was written by a fan and it's fiction. I use the term fanfiction here in a generalized way as it suffers from the many tropes that fanfictions tend to have. I direct that mostly towards the Joshua Graham simping that's apparent in this mod. Especially from Legged Livius, oh god. It's gotten to the point where it's almost comical and it pretty much just seeps into every aspect of this mod. This mod is an absolute roller coaster of contrasting tone. It feels like it's trying to be serious, but also funny and goofy without a balance between the two. Now, I've done similar things in my mods, and whether or not you think that's balanced is up to you, but 
when I look at this mod, it just it feels like a roller coaster with what the fuck is the tone here? The Masterson's dying is probably meant to have more weight, but honestly, it just looks like they saw the Legion and shat themselves to death. That's probably just an issue with first-time modders, scripting, couldn't make a great script like how it was set up in the Honest Hearts Vanilla. I'll give them a pass for that. That would be probably a really difficult script for a first-time modder to make. I would probably even have trouble with setting that up properly. But what's not excusable to me is the burned ones, because they're just the goofiest faction. And, and people talk about them like they're meant to be taken seriously, but they're just a bunch of weirdo cosplayers that are just obsessed with Joshua Graham. I feel like I'm fighting a bunch of Redditors here. What's going on? I don't really know what's goofier about them in terms of characters. Is it their cult leader or the super mutant Adam? And speaking of super mutants, the Highlanders. Okay, they're funny, sure, but meeting them was quite a tonal whiplash for me after speaking with Joshua for the first time. In fact, most of the main factions in this mod are pretty goofy, but those two just take the cake. Although I will have to say I will give the Highlanders a bit of a pass as they're kind of separate in a way from most of the other aspects of this mod story. But then there's the vault. The entire vault segment just exists and I don't really have words for it. It's silly, it doesn't really make much sense to me, and frankly just really feels out of place for anything in this mod. Especially here, I can tell it was meant to be taken seriously, but it's just weird. There's also a few minor gripes in terms of silliness, like the surfer dude bros thing, that was a bit strange. Then of course the child soldiers in power armor, where did the where did the fuck did they get those power armor suits? And many, many more things that I'm just not even gonna mention. But between all this, there are really good lines in this, really good written lines, some interesting characters. It's just in the mix of all this weird and bad stuff. But hey, maybe it's just me. Maybe there's some grand message that the author's writing here that I just can't see. I only did play the mod once, and then I looked over it in other playthroughs and checked it out in the GEC. I think I have a general sense of where the mod author was going, but perhaps I'm just not understanding it as it was intended. That is entirely a possibility. Now, I should address the elephant in the room, and that, of course, is Joshua himself. With all the simping for this character in this mod, you'd think he'd be cool or just as cool as he was in the main game. Well, I hate to disappoint. Maybe to some of you, this is the Joshua you always wanted. But for me, this is just one of those Chad Wojak memes. I'll take vanilla Chad Joshua over this guy any day. Instead of the man, the myth, the legend meeting you in a cave all bandaged up, loading a bunch of fucking 1911s for his people, and talking about the scripture, we get a crying, crumpled mess of a man wallowing in self-pity and doubt that can't do anything unless this random dude tells him what to do. Now, the character of Joshua Graham in Vanilla Honest Hearts, he was conflicted, sure, but he kept most of those conflictions to himself. Was he going to be a legion general for the dead horses, or was he going to go back to the ways of the new Canaanites? But all in all, the player has to convince him that killing salt upon wounds is wrong, and that utterly changes the course of the story. But the main point that I need you to focus on here is that the player convinces him that his current line of thought is wrong. He changes his thought process. The character already had a thought process going for him. He doesn't need the courier's permission to do this. He's gonna do it. That's who he is. But in Honest Hearts Reborn, we get a version of Joshua Graham that is utterly and definitively broken, and he won't do anything unless some random character from the wasteland tells him what's the right thing to do. At this point, Joshua Graham stops being a character and it's just a gameplay plot MacGuffin. To me, this isn't the kind of man that would pull himself out of the Grand Canyon and keep pursuing forward. In the words of the original Joshua Graham, he only survived because the fire that burned within him was brighter than the fire that burned outside him. Now you can disagree with me on this take. That's perfectly fine. But overall, I feel like this is a weaker version of Joshua Graham that we didn't really need. However, I will give the mod author props for one thing about Joshua Graham, is that there's actually an interesting build-up for when you get to meet him. You don't just instantly meet him as soon as you start the quest mod, like you would in the vanilla DLC of Honest Hearts. 
You will spend about half of this mod hunting down Joshua Graham. I like that. I feel like the vanilla DLC could have used that. That would have been interesting. But then, you meet him. And once you meet him in this mod, he's crying about how his boo-boos are all ouchy-ouchy and you gotta kiss him and make him better, and then you gotta play a therapist for him and tell him what to do. I mean, come on. What am I? I'm just a fucking courier. How the fuck should I know? As for the other characters in this mod, I don't really care about many of them. The two companions that you get in this mod, Zoe Young and Brutus, have a chance to be interesting, but just aren't. In the case of Zoe, I feel like she comes in too late in the story and doesn't really add too much, even though, considering how this rewrite has worked, it feels like that she would have a lot more of a stake in all of this, but she really just doesn't. She is the niece of Daniel, I believe, and once she meets Joshua, the man that a lot of people are blaming for the death of Daniel, she just goes, oh wow, it's Joshua, and that's, that's about it. And then afterwards, you don't really see her that much. She's just kind of that typical uh, naive girl that wants to see the world and has only been in like one certain spot. An archetype we've seen quite a few times. As for Brutus, I can't say for certain if his character gets any better because I didn't do the Legion playthrough, but he's basically just another Joshua Graham simp. The second biggest Joshua Graham simp. Speaking of which, the main antagonist, or in other words, the lead Joshua Graham simp, is a fucking joke in this mod. His dialogue, and the player's dialogue with speaking with him, feels like two people that are trying to convince each other that they know what they're talking about, and that they're really deep and thought-provoking, when really, they aren't. Let's see, uh, Leggett, do you know what paranoid personality disorder is? What? What does that have to do with anything? She offered no, wait, plenty wait, wait, of evidence, we can trust dude, her completely. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, I have to criticize this. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go on. A, I'm going on tangent mode. This is this is rage mode. Okay, why? This is whenever medicine checks are a thing. I feel like in the modding community, too many times people bring it up for the most stupid armchair psychologist reasons versus how New Vegas actually interprets this. There is no reason, even if there is symptoms, that you would even bring this up in a conversation with this guy. You'd only bring it up if it actually was at a vulnerable volatile moment that he was displaying that could compromise something uh, a good example is dog or god from dead money you know what i'm saying you could clearly tell because of the disposition and the hostile nature of like a literal split personality nightkin that he could kill you if he wanted to and it's just a different personality that wants to do so why why are you doing this stop 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 <laughs> Oh god, and please, do not even get me started on that final reveal for Legate Levius' true intentions. It's silly, it's out of nowhere, and frankly, it's a bit creepy. I don't really care for it. In terms of things that I did care for, I actually did like Amy Wilkes, and I feel like it might be solely due to the voice actor. I didn't talk too much about the voice acting in this review. I tend not to judge it too harshly because... It's a mod that somebody made for free, and it's hard to get good voice actors these days, especially voice actors that know what they're doing. But the voice actor for Amy Wilkes is amazing, and I think her performance alone sells these lines. Sure, there are a few groaners here and there, with her constant quotes of poetry and the courier reciting it with her, but the rest of the lines feel like it's almost written by a different person, and I have to wonder if I only feel that way because of how they're performed. Wait a minute. I think... Oh, no, just a minute. Whose woods these are, I think I know. This house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. No one then... Wait a minute, don't tell me. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year, he gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake and... Oh, it's the best line. How can I forget? These woods are lovely, dark and deep. Oh, these woods are lovely, dark and deep. But I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. 
and miles to go before I sleep. Those are beautiful words. I might even like her because she actually feels like an actual character. Honestly, more so than Joshua. Her goals make sense, her relationships make sense, and I just wish I could say that about more characters in this mod, because it seems to be wanting to be more serious and character-focused. Again, though, take everything I've said with a grain of salt. I'm no writer. But I certainly try to be. I went into this mod preparing for the worst. Yes, there are some really strange things in this mod. Yes, this mod is a little broken. And yes, I do prefer the original Honest Hearts over this. But is the mod really the worst mod out there? No. Not by a long shot. No way. Considering that this is somebody's first mod, I'd say that's a crowning achievement to make a DLC length size project by yourself with little to no experience. It's honestly worthy of praise, even if the story is arguably worse. I personally feel like the goal that this mod set out to do wasn't fully realized. From looking at how this mod is set up, I feel like most people just hate it because it overrides Zion. If this took place somewhere else with different characters, I think a lot less people would be hating on it. When I first read the description for this mod, I was a bit worried because it almost felt a little pretentious for one person to think they could do an entire DLC better than a whole gaming company especially with the whole award-winning playwright comment. But after playing through the whole mod and watching an interview with a mod creator, he seems like a cool guy who wanted to give it a try and fix something that he thought was broken, and I can't fault him for his determination. So in that sense, maybe it is something you can boast about. Not the award-winning playwright part, but the determination and ambition. I'd be curious to see what this mod author does in the future. As for the mod itself, I don't think I'll ever play it again, and... I wouldn't personally recommend it to common players. But if you're interested in playing a different version of Honest Hearts, then by all means give it a go, but then uninstall it afterwards to avoid any bugs or issues, and load a save before, you know, you have it installed. I would have to give this mod a 4 out of 10. Closer to a 3 than a 5. Thank you guys for watching, and for the love of god, please do not harass the mod authors of any mods I cover. They don't deserve the hate for putting out free mod content for you to play. I'm considering doing some more of these reviews in the future, so if you have any like thoughts about that or you want to show a mod to me that I should play, toss it down in the comments. I'll probably focus on mods that don't get a lot of attention, so if you're in the comments spamming New Vegas bounties, I'm, I'm probably going to ignore it because there are enough videos on that mod to pretty much sum up anything I could ever say about it. If you're interested, Ramble Lime made a really great video about the entire Some Guys series. I'm going to throw that down in the description. Go ahead and give his channel a watch if that's something you're really into. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all for watching, and make sure to join me next time for when I bother to actually post another video.